Oh, hey. I didn't see you there. I was just looking at some footage in my new DVR. <clears throat> well, as long as you're here, we may as well talk about Beta Flight. That's what I say to all my guests. Most of them leave. <laughs> you guys, it's time to talk about what might be the single most curious feature in Beta Flight 3.0, and that is the new Two Degrees of Freedom PID controller, the Beta Flight PID controller, which gives you these new sliders right here. The P set point weight and the D set point weight. And I have been thinking for a long time about how to explain these to you. Now, the first thing I would suggest you do is that you pause this video if you haven't watched my video on the, the D term set point and D term from error versus D term from measurement. Go watch that video because it'll give some background in this. But if you don't want to do that or you don't want the technical nitty gritty, then I think I've come up with a way to explain this that that conceptualizes see let me take a side trip for a second the problem with coming up with analogies and simple explanations is that you have to make something more understandable but you have to still represent it accurately it's easy to simplify something if you don't care about maintaining accuracy uh and then people go oh yeah i, I understand i always thought that was so complicated but you don't really understand it you, you just understand some concept that isn't correct so i think i've come up with the right way to put this and i'm gonna i'm gonna now let's talk about it with a with a one degree of freedom PID controller, which is what we have had up until this point, let's think about the the main concepts in in it. There's there is a set point, which is what the thing that's being controlled is supposed to be doing. So the canonical example of a PID controller is you're a thermostat controlling the temperature of something, uh, you know, some industrial process. And the set point there is the temperature that you want to achieve, right? And uh, then you have the measured value, which is the actual temperature that we, we get from the thermostat. And then we've got the error, which is the difference between them, right? And in, in our quadcopter, the set point is a target number of degrees per second of rotation. So we could say, I want 100 degrees per second of rotation on the pitch axis. And then there's the gyro, which gives us the measurement. And then there's the error, which is the difference between what you're telling the copter to do and what it's really doing. And the set point, of course, is determined by the position of your sticks, right? So as you move the stick left and right, forward and back, you're, you're creating, you're moving the set point on each of the available axes. In my video on D-term from error versus D-term from measurement, I talked about how there's actually two different kinds of error that can occur. And one kind of error occurs when, through some external force, the, the copter is not actually doing what it's being commanded to do. Like, for example, because there's wind or, or whatever. And the other kind of error occurs when you move the stick very rapidly. And what we talked about was that when you move the stick very rapidly, in that moment, the error shoots way up, right? There's a lot of error, but the error is because you've moved the set point very rapidly. So we want to make a distinction between error that occurs because you move the set point very rapidly and error that occurs because the real world isn't living up to your expectations. Folks, you, you, those of you who are in a relationship can take something from this. <laughs> Think about it. Um, what a two degree of freedom PID controller does is it allows you to balance those two and distinguish between them, whereas a one degree of freedom PID controller doesn't make any distinction at all. And so here, we, the set point weight determines how much weight will be given to error that is caused because you moved the set point, the stick, very rapidly. And when you lower the set point weight, you're saying, don't give as much priority to set point changes or error that results from me moving the set point. And when you raise the set point weight, you're saying, give a lot of priority to that error. Let that affect the PID sum a lot, okay? So one thing to take away from this is that if you have the stick centered, 
or even if you're just not moving the sticks, you're holding them in whatever position they're in, or pinchers if you pinch, if you're just holding the sticks steady, these two, these sliders don't affect anything. These sliders only come into play when you are moving the sticks, and, and they come into play most when you are rapidly moving the sticks. Like you go into a snap roll, boom, you bang the stick over, right? In that moment, you've moved the set point so rapidly that error becomes massive, and immediately the PID controller starts moving the copter to get it to correct the error, right? And then once the copter's moving, the stick is stationary, the copter's moving, the error drops very rapidly. When the set point weight is high, that error will have a large effect on the PID sum, and the copter will respond very sharply. When the set when the when the set point weight is low, that error will not have a large effect on the PID sum. So now let's talk about subjectively how this stuff might manifest in your flight experience. For the P set point weight, when the P set point weight is higher, you'll actually get more overshoot at the end of moves, more overshoot and rebound, and you'll need more D gain in order to control that or lower P gain. When you lower the P set point weight, you get a more efficient P term behavior but you also get slightly less overall sort of p-term magnitude, if you will. So a lower p set point weight uh, may mean that you could have higher p gains uh, and with an overall still fine flight experience. Boris has suggested that 0.75 is actually an ideal value for the p set point weight. The older PID controller effectively had a p set point weight of one, and and that actually lowering the p set point weight produces a better flight experience. Uh, if you want to continue to lower it, you certainly can. For the D set point weight, this is more subjective. So Boris has pretty much clearly said P set point weight 0.75 is, is he thinks if I've if I've if I've understood him correctly, he thinks that's just where it should be. But for the D term, the set point weight is very much a matter of your preference. So a pilot who prefers a sort of a smooth, uh, maybe schizo style flight might like a lower set point weight for D. And a pilot who wants a kind of a razor sharp uh, experience might want a higher set point weight. And in fact, the uh, the way it works is that a set point weight of one is equivalent to the old error, D term from error. And a set point weight of about 30, I think, Boris said, is equivalent to the old uh, set point weight from measurement. Maybe it's zero, I'm not sure. And we actually have the ability to go up to a set point weight of two, which is basically double error. So if, if error was sharp stick response and measurement was soft stick response, then a set point weight of two is like we would refer to called ninja mode. It's just the sharpest stick response. The disadvantage of having the D set point weight very high is that every single stick movement produces an abrupt and sharp copter movement. So if you're going for a smooth flight style, you actually don't want this because potentially every little wiggle and tremor of your fingers will manifest itself in the camera. And you may actually want to lower the D set point weight. Okay. So uh, what I would suggest for someone who is starting to explore this is I would suggest you leave the P set point weight at 0.75 and you play with D values from as low as about, let's say, 33 to as high as about, let's say, 1.5. And you, you just sort of set it you know, up and down in that range and feel how the copter responds differently. And then once you find a value there that you like, you can also play with the P set point weight, maybe take the D set point weight and leave it where you like it, wherever that might be, and play with the P set point weight up and down as well. Although again, the P set point weight may be less uh, susceptible to a subjective experience, and it may be okay to just leave that at 75 and, and, and leave it alone. Be aware that if you change the P set point weight, you may need to adjust your P gain and potentially your D gain. Raising the P set point weight may require a lower P gain and a higher D gain, and lowering the P set point weight may allow a higher P gain and a lower D gain. So th th some trial and error may be required, but be aware that if you just change the D set point weight or the P set point weight, and you don't at least a take a look at your tune, you may not be getting the full effect. In other words, if you lower the P set point weight, but you don't raise your P gain, the copter may fly really soft and you may go, oh, this is terrible, I hate this. But maybe if you were to retune your P gains and they were to come up some, you would find that the copter actually flew much better. This is a topic that is still very, very open for us to learn about. 
We don't, you know, in, in three months, we'll all have a lot of experience with this and we'll all be able to say, you know, what works and what doesn't work, but we're still not there yet. For those of you who are maybe feeling a little bit overwhelmed, leave the defaults alone. Definitely leave the preset point weight alone and ask yourself whether you want to fly more like, let's say, Schizo or more like, let's say, uh, Min Chan Kim. And if you want to fly more like Schizo, perhaps you, you lower your deset point weight down to maybe 30 or 40. And if you want to fly more like Min Chan, maybe you leave it around 1. Okay? And, and that's good enough for a beginner. One other related thing that I want to talk about here is the RC interpolation. So one of the things that we talked about in the D-term from error versus D-term from measurement video is that raising the D-term set point weight, in other words, more error and less measurement, means more D-term kick. And if you don't know what D-term kick is, again, you can go watch that video. Because of that, it's been necessary to add RC smoothing back in. So RC smoothing is the thing that smooths out the steps in the incoming RC signal. Because if you think about an R incoming RC signal, you're at this value, and then we sample, and you go to the next value, right? So it's a stair step. It's not a smooth, continuous line. And every one of those stair steps is a rapid change in the set point. And that's where even if you're not necessarily moving the stick very abruptly, there are still those stair steps in RC command that are uh, that are causing a rapid change in the set point. And so you get a lot of D-term kick. And as you raise the D set point weight, you get more and more D term kick. So, whereas before the amount of D term kick, even with the PID controller set to D term from error, the amount of D term kick was manageable. Now that we have the ability to turn the D set point weight up to, you know, to two, <laughs> we need, we have so much D term kick that we need RC smoothing to come back in. And actually, Boris has come up with a new algorithm for RC smoothing. That's why it's now called RC interpolation instead of smoothing that allows him to smooth the signal with minimal latency, minimal delay. And the auto algorithm here allows Betaflight to decide how much smoothing you need based on the D-term set point weight that you've chosen. And so if you're doing this stuff here, with if you're playing with these sliders, you definitely want to leave this on auto and let let beta flight decide what it needs to do okay so that's what i would recommend there Alrighty. well i hope that i've given you some insight uh i i, I really need to strike a balance here between waiting till i fully fully understand like if i, I wait till i have three weeks of flight experience on this i'd be able to give you a little more perspective on what the what some good values were for p term set point weight and d term set point weight and i just haven't done that yet but on the flip side i know you guys are, are just champing at the bit to get this video so i wanted to get it out I hope it's been helpful. I hope it's been educational and happy flying.